So we hope that today is the start of something very special as we begin to, to ask tough questions to our state political leaders. The action being taken here in this public telling is laudable, necessary, and encouraging to me personally. A lifetime experience is when you take large money from people, you're influenced by it. The question was, is there corruption going on in the Capitol? Yes, there is. The time has come for a new kind of politics in America. And we had better act while there is still a chance for us. What you are about to see is a telling session put on by the People's Legislature, which is sponsored by FightingBob.com, Fighting Bob Fest, and the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign. But I'm going to do it. I'm not going to give up, and I don't want any of you. Ed Garvey, editor of FightingBob.com, and Mike McCabe, executive director of Wisconsin Democracy Campaign, called the meeting to order. Garvey set the tone with these remarks. Those who are sort of the enemies of reform tell us nobody cares. Well, the fact that you're here today means that people do care and they want to have a government that they believe represents them and not the special interests. So we always call this the lobbyist legislature. Today it's the people's legislature. And if we're successful in our program, then I think uh, a year from now we can come back together and say that indeed uh, the legislature has been somewhat transformed. The idea is simple. If legislatures will not hold meaningful hearings on campaign reform, then the people will hold telling sessions. A distinguished group of citizens stepped forward to give testimony, and what you are about to see will inspire you to get involved in taking back our government by hosting a telling session in your area. And we're hoping that uh, today will be the start of something pretty special around Wisconsin. At the end of today's session, we're going to be talking more about about how all of you can play a role in replicating this event today all over the state, in your own local communities, to take this idea and go out and ask these questions to state legislators and candidates for the Assembly and Senate in every corner of Wisconsin. This was an historic occasion. The hearing room on the fourth floor of the Capitol was jammed with those who believe in the reform of our system, and the seats were filled by the powers that ought to be as opposed to the powers that be. The telling got underway with questions asked by a group of citizens. Do you believe Wisconsin government is corrupt? I'm looking at these three fellows right in front of me and, and asking those questions. If not, why not? If so, what are you doing about it? As we begin to, to ask tough questions to our state political leaders. And uh, as Ed said, this isn't a public hearing, this is a public telling. First, we're, we're looking for our state's political leaders to tell us where they stand and to tell us how they feel about the way the people's business is being conducted at the Capitol. The first to testify was Lindy Wall Woodliffe, who blew the whistle on the Republican caucus that led to the caucus scandal, the conviction of legislative leaders, and an awakening of the media and the people to the corruption that is endemic in a legislative process that's based on campaign contributions. I'm assuming that most of you know, at least superficially, why I'm here today. And perhaps this is the history of why we're all here today. But permit me to give you a short history of my own. In 2000, during the campaign season, I worked at the Assembly Republican Caucus. And in March of 2001, after the campaigns were done, I resigned and delivered undeniable evidence about the long-running scheme to defraud you, the taxpayers of Wisconsin, through illegal campaigning, wherein the legislative leaders continually used tax dollars to work against the democratic processes they had pledged to uphold. Our laws ensure public order, and legislators, lawmakers, ought to be the most law-abiding among us. But what I saw in this building was lawmakers who were lawbreakers, men and women who thumbed their nose at the very laws they created, and when exposed, complained that the laws that they had made were too complicated for them to comprehend. <laughs> if they can't understand the law, can we really trust them to be making our laws? Our leaders, many of them, seem to have no shame, no concern for the issues that matter to us. We, 
I, at least I speak for you boldly. We care about truth and justice and equality. We believe that laws are important, that in a free society, each one of us has a responsibility to respect and obey those laws. We have a voice. We have the opportunity. We're free. We can assemble here today, which is wonderful. And this is a start. This is a scratch on the surface. If each one of us will just stand in the face of our fear, in the face of people who won't listen to us, and continue to speak out the truth and demand justice, demand that we have that we are allowed to keep our democ democracy intact, we can do this. We can win this fight because you know what? We are more. We are many. They are the few. We can, if we, if we reach deep down inside of our own selves, we can do a better job than they have done. Don't you believe that? Don't you all think that you are capable? After Lindy's powerful testimony, E. Michael McCann, the respected district attorney of Milwaukee who participated in the prosecution of Chuck Koala in the caucus scandal, laid it on the line. I have always been very proud of our reputation, our once national reputation, as being a state of clean government. And I think all of us that care about Wisconsin have felt that way. Today in our state, uh, I have always believed uh, that the most powerful individuals in our state were the governor, the speaker of the assembly, and the majority leader in the uh, state senate. That those three are the most powerful persons in the state of Wisconsin. The Senate Majority Leader at the time, Mr. Kupala, has been convicted of felonies and is a, stands before the court as a convicted individual. The Speaker of the Assembly is charged <coughs> with felonies and will go to trial in February of this year. Those are two of the three most powerful persons in our state. The Capitol is on fire, literally on fire. And I don't know if the people of our state realize that. I had an opportunity to see things that I had no idea were going on in the state of Wisconsin. And the people of our state have no idea of what's going on. It's a, a distressing comparison or analogy, but one can think almost of lifting off the lid of a garbage can and defining therein worms and maggots that one never believed would be found in state government. I don't know about you, but after you've read a hundred times someone saying it doesn't matter that anybody contributed to my campaign. No, a $50,000 contribution made no difference. A $700,000 contribution had no impact on it. That, that uh, invites us to suspend what we've learned from life's experience. A lifetime experience is when you take large money from people, you're influenced by it. There's a basic, no one wants to be an ingrate. And uh, you know, I just, uh, <laughs> I mean, to take, to take uh, $50,000 and say, that won't influence me, I, I, what I, you'd have to be, and I, I wish to offend no one here that believes that, but to believe you could take fifty or 700000 and not be influenced by it is to, to suggest that anyone that tells me that, that I'm as dumb as a shovel. How could anyone believe that? And when you see it, no, it doesn't affect, we took this money or that money was given, it played no role, that invites you to, to say everything else I've learned in life makes no difference. It's BS. It does make a difference. The expression is said, pay to play. There was a time many years ago, it occasionally happens now, but in the legislature there was a time you had to, a bribe, a legal a bribe in the legal sense is where there's a quid pro quo, an articulated agreement. I will give you $5,000, you will vote yes on this bill. That's a bribe. We all know what that is. And when that surfaces, you got evidence for it. We're beyond that. The next step is a wink and a nod. We don't articulate it. But I give you the money, and I wink, and you nod. We're beyond that. That isn't happening either. It's strictly everybody knows. You got a bill pending, you better talk with the leader in the legislative group. And if, if there's money, if there, if there doesn't need to be linked to two discussions, we got a bill, but we'd like to contribute. You don't need to be that crude. It's much more sophisticated. No articulated bribe, not even a wink or a nod. An existing understanding that you've got a bill in the legislature, damn, there better be some money on the table. We have to stop the washing machines. We have to stop the covert role of corporate money. We have to stop the compromises that are going on. The advance of secret special interests, the laws permitted to happen. 
And, and so far as we can change those laws, perhaps not all that we would wish to change, but as much as we can, I think people and hopefully legislators of both parties say it's much better that we first have clean government, that the first interest is the interest of the voters, the people of our state, and not necessarily the advance of either party. Thank you. Perhaps the highlight of the year was the testimony from 96-year-old Granny D. Haddock. Six years earlier, at the age of 90, she walked across America in support of campaign reform. After 3,200 miles of walking, she appeared in Washington, D.C. in support of the McCain-Feingold bill, and she continues to fight for clean elections everywhere she goes. Her testimony is unforgettable. I'm so happy that you invited me to come to Wisconsin, the land of fighting Bob LaFollette. <laughs> and Russ the Rock Feingold. <laughs> I think you know that the Wisconsin Policy Research Institute recently asked Wisconsin citizens if they thought their elected officials truly represented them as citizens or instead represented the special interests or merely represented their own interests as politicians. Well, some 94% believe that their elected officials represent the special interests and themselves. Not the voters, not the voters. But that leaves 6% who think that their elected officials actually represented them. Now, who are these 6%? <laughs> <coughs> Well, you have to take into account that 3% of Wisconsin citizens are millionaires. So they are probably indeed right. <laughs> they are probably being represented. But that still leaves another 3% who think they are being represented and not being millionaires are probably quite mistaken. <laughs> Certainly, we all want to think well of ourselves. We all see ourselves as hard, unselfish workers, building a better tomorrow for our people. If a senator in his Lexus or Mercedes speeds by a homeless family trudging down the street looking for a place to spend the night, he the the senator, after voting down a budget item for affordable housing, it is not because he is cruel, for he is working for the larger goal of building a prosperous society that encourages people to get to work and take care of their own families. And he is doing that today by helping an oil refining, refinery avoid smokestack regulations. <laughs> it is not because he doesn't want clean air and water, but because there is a price to pay for jobs and growth. And you have to break some eggs to make that omelet. In fact, you may have to allow some mercury into the eggs. <laughs> Go to legislative hearings, stand and protest when an official is taking part in a committee hearing on a subject that concerns the very interest who bankroll his or her career. <laughs> the fact is, meetings with lobbyists at all hours endless committee hearings, listening to whines from the community and the non-stop fundraising events, make for a tough and thankless life of public service. Well, it was all interesting and sadly amusing while it lasted. 
but it's time for we, the ungrateful people, to put these dedicated martyrs out of their misery. <laughs> Finally, Nino Amato, a consumer advocate and former UW Board of Regent who helped expose the illegal and secret collaborative meetings between the Public Service Commission of Wisconsin and utility executives, made it clear that the cozy ties between utility monopolies and the Public Service Commission damages public trust, and that it runs contrary to the public interest. Because the laws on the books, if you violate ex parte communications, the fine is $300 per commissioner. You can go out on the belt line or the interstate and throw out a piece of paper, and I think the littering fee in this fine in this state is $1,000 to $2,000. Let's talk about our utility bills. You're receiving some of the highest utility bills than we've had in the history of the state. And the utility executives would love to say, oh, it's because of Katrina, and oh, it's because of natural gas prices. 90% or over $100 million um, of the increases are directly attributable to the rise in natural gas prices in the aftermath of hurricanes Rita and Katrina. And thank goodness for this Attorney General. She spent 11 months investigating this. They found the smoking gun. She ruled they violated open meeting laws and they violated ex parte communications. Those are blatant violations and Peg Lawton Sarga deserves a pause for that. I also want to thank Kelly Megan, who was a student here on the body, because when she talked about her tuition going up over 50% in four years, what it really boils down to, it was this governor that raised that tuition. But the students don't make campaign contributions. Politics is about the improvement of people's lives. It's about advancing the cause of peace and justice in our country and in our world. Politics is about doing well for people. Thank you. Wow, I would say that uh, we've heard from four people that uh, if we needed any inspiration this morning, we got it. How can you get involved? You can do it by holding a telling session in your own community. Invite your assembly person, state senator, congressman, village chairman, town board members, or the mayor to come and tell you, the citizens, how they are funding their own campaigns. We need to make sure that decisions of the capital are not based on campaign contributions. It's that simple. And by providing public funding instead of special interest funding, we can change the dynamics here. So people who are concerned about all issues, environmental protection, good infrastructure, health care, education, spending priorities, and you can go down the list, will be listened to and they won't be disregarded just because they don't have a big checkbook. It is time that the people took back the state of Wisconsin from the vested interests who march in with bags full of money and who control the legislative process. They fund the campaigns, they select the candidates, they set the agenda, and they get their results. That has to end. This presentation is sponsored by the People's Legislature and Fighting Bob, Inc. If you are reformers, get the job done or go home. <laughs> 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 <laughs>